first step in doing the trestles for each end of the Cimarron bridge I need to collect and assemble all the lumber that I, I need. And I've worked that out from the plan that I uh, drew up uh, several years ago that I've used for all my trestles. And I've got a collection of lumber here. I've got 8 by 16s, 30, and now mine is 16 feet long, not 32 because it's on a curve. And that's the joist, triple joist that go from bent to bent. There is a 12 by 12 header, 12 by 12 legs, a footing across here of 12 by 12, the diagonal bracing, which are 3 by 10s, and then you get the girts that join the bends at the lower uh, levels, and they're 4 by 10s. And what I've done is I've taken each one and using wire brush that I use for cleaning files. I've gently scribed some graining on all the sides and then I take steel wool and lump of steel wool and I sand all the edges down with steel wool. That gets rid of all the burrs and I've explained all this in previous videos and then calculating the dimensions I've pre-cut all the pieces. So here are the joists, here are the headers, the lower footings, the ones even further down at the bottom because these are going to be a fairly tall bent. These are the girts. The diagonal bracing I'll leave till last because I'll have to actually measure those on each one just to get the accuracy. Now that I've got them all uh, cut to length. Next step will be to, to stain all the pieces. But before I do that I'll just take a file card and I'll just true up the ends to get rid of the cut from the chopper. And then I can start assembling the trestle bends on my template here. Now there are several designs for bends but essentially they're all have the same uh, limitations and that's the length of the timbers that make it up. Too often I see modelers building tall trestles with one long beam on each leg. That distance right there in O scale is 20 feet. So that's 40 feet. Now you're not going to get timbers that long and uniform as a 12 by 12. So 20 feet is a typical story and those legs will sit on a cross member here and then that is supported by another series of bends. And because of the load and the, and the, 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 the spread as the story gets taller and taller you need more legs. Now the two center ones are verticals and they go straight down because they're taking the vertical load. And then you get the splay of the legs on each side that start to distribute the weight. Now the other thing that modelers make a mistake on is the diagonal bracing. And this top story, the diagonal bracing there is 20 minus 27 feet which is a pretty substantial piece of timber on its own and it starts to get longer when you get down here now these ones here start to get up to 30 feet and you're just not going to get a single uniform and enough of them of these diagonals so what they do is they put a half lap and half that distance. So now we're looking at a 15 foot piece of diagonal bracing that's half lapped here and all bolted to these legs. And that is how this is stabilized. And then of course there are NBWs going on every single joint all the way through. And the girts that go through the cords going this way 
they would be bolted through here. So we'd have NBWs on all these legs going through here as well. And all these NBWs really help to add a lot of detail to this, this trestle and to these bents. And you can check my other videos that explain how we build all these stringers here going from trestle bent to trestle bent. So I'm not going to be going over the construction of this on this video because they're all on the other videos uh, in a lot more detail. But that gives you a little bit of an explanation of how these trestles are actually built. And of course as they get taller the legs and the splay start spreading out and then there'll be more more timbers. But the most important thing to remember is this is these legs are not one long continuous leg. You just you're just not going to find you're just not going to find timbers that are 38 and 40 feet long and longer in some cases as some models just make them all the way down to the bottom. Now the the the, the narrow gauge, the DNRGW narrow gauge, doesn't have diagonal bracing on the outside, and that's that's more common on standard gauge. Uh, this is a fairly lightweight um, railroad uh, with equipment, so the diagonal bracing was never done on on these, except in very special extenuating circumstances where there might have been lateral loads. It's important to get all the vertical posts exactly equal and even. So what I've done is I've sanded the one end of each one of these individually to make sure I get a nice flush cut. Then what I've done is I've stacked them all together into this block, flush on the end, and I've taped it with some masking tape. And you can see when I look at the other end how uneven they all are. It's very difficult to make them all exactly the same without uh, uh, doing something like this. So I'll just retrue these up very slightly on the sanding disc and then I'll use the sanding disc to flush all these up. So taking my sanding disc I'll, I'll just spray I'll just true these up again. And I usually use a square in here but I've got a good guide Now it's important to slide this back and forth, not hold it steady on there, otherwise you'll burn the ends. Now using my square, I set the square in on, on the guide here, so I can put the blocks beside the square, and then I'll move this back and forth to grind that down. Almost got it all. Just true up the other end again. So now we've got a nice flush cut on both sides. You can follow the preparation of the timbers cutting, graining, and staining on my other clinics on tr building trestles. But just as a reminder, first thing that's important is a pair of rubber gloves. And you don't want to get any of the stain on your hands. It's carcinogenic. I use a small tray like this. I fill that with, with the mix of alcohol, alcohol and shoe dye. And then I take each group, drop it in, take it out, put on a paper towel, dry it all off, and put them back in the groups where each are numbered and identified so I know what timbers they are because these have been all been pre-cut. So that's very important is to wear rubber gloves. These two posts are quite straightforward. All you need is the post cut to length, square end, and put some adhesive on the end, press it into the top beam, 
and put a weight on there and let it dry. The ones on the side are on an angle so we have to have that cut or ground sanded whichever you prefer on a slight angle so that you get a perfect fit against that. Now without getting into any fancy guides I found a very simple way is simply to take a piece of paper and lay it on that plan and just cut the angle that you wish on the side here and now what I've done is I've just taped that template onto the disc sander and I have the angle and all I need to do now is turn the grinder on or the sander on and I just use that guide there visually and just just put it in there and there I have a cut that's perfect. Now putting some adhesive on here with the leg cut to length you just press it up there and that is an absolutely tight perfect fit on that joint. After assembling these bents what I've done is I've glued a piece of scrap timber on the bottom it's unfinished and that will give me an area, a little bit of support from the underside with the depth of plaster in here. So the plaster will come up to the underside of the footing here and that will be the, the, the grade or the earth. Now I've still got to put the NBWs on here and I'll do those uh, shortly. But the two end bends are the ones that support the embankment. And what I've done now is I've assembled the end ones and they're planked and in this particular case I've used 12 by 12s and I've used two lengths uh, sometimes these would have a batter depending on the earth that's behind it but in this case I want something a little different and I want to be able to put some retaining that's on the extension so I pre-cut my timbers and these will these will fit in like so and what I'll end up with is I'll end up with retaining walls that will go off on the side and they can go they can go either way and I'll work that out according to the specific uh, uh, location on the, on the uh, site and that retaining wall will help fill the side so it can go like so, or it can go like so. And I'll fill those up uh, next according to uh, the particular location that I've got on the layout. Now these will also have some NBWs uh, on here as well. These timbers typically would be bolted from the, from the back side, so um, we won't have bolts all the way up here. That would be a little bit uh, overdone and uh, I've kept this flush on the top here so that's where the road bed and the the uh, the beams will come in from the from the trestle and they'll sit on top of this I now have the three sides assembled with interlacing corners fingered each one and I've pre-drilled all the holes for the NBWs to go in there. There's a reinforcing post here and it has holes for the bolts to go in there where they're pinned to bind all the, uh, the retaining timbers. In this case I've used 12 by 12s so they're all consistent with what's behind here and that'll take the track across here and we'll fill in on, on each side and the, the earth will actually come down on an angle to the bottom and back up the other side as the retainment.